Hey, thanks for watching. This is the Textivo Project, and I'm your host, Steve. And in this one, we take a look at Ubuntu, Windows Ubuntu. Every once in a while, you get these uh, Windows clones on Linux. And when you get them, you kind of got to take a real good look at them before you install them. Because they don't tend to follow the spirit of Linux. So I dive deep and give you my opinion and my frustrations. Stay tuned and watch. And if you get a chance, tick that follow button. Sorry about the audio. It's cold out and I have a heater running in the background. Because as you guys know, I have all my stuff out in the garage. Okay, something interesting here. I ran across a distribution, if you can call it that, uh, called Ubuntu. Windows Ubuntu 11, or Ubuntu 11. Okay, I went ahead and go, went to their website. Um, the Windows Ubuntu operating system, Ubuntu, is also known as a Windu, Windows Ubuntu, also known as Windows Ubuntu, is an operating system that inherits all the appearance and functionality of Microsoft Windows. Um, not quite. That's that's misleading. Um, including the new Copilot Assistant, but does not require TPM, TPM Secure Boot or any other hardware requirements for its operation. Developed using the Ubuntu operating system as a base, you have a fast, secure, and very efficient system. Uh, no, it's not secure. And I'll get into that in, in a little bit, and I'll show you why it's not secure. Um, you will also be able to run Microsoft Windows and Android applications using Ubuntu. Okay, they use Wine for the uh, Windows applications and the Android, oh god, I forget what it's called, Android subsystem for Linux. I think that's what it's called. I, I probably missed, that's probably wrong. Um, anyways, we'll get into that when we get in, into the uh, operating system, and then I'll correct myself then. Um, Ubuntu's 11 Plasma or Ubuntu 11 Cinnamon. I went, went ahead with the uh, KDE desktop environment because that's the one I'm most familiar with. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty familiar with the Cinnamon desktop environment too, but stick with what you know, right? <laughs> okay. Now, Windows Ubuntu 11 Plasma. All these... All the ease of Microsoft Windows 11 with the power, speed, and security of Linux. Well, that is true. But in a VM, this thing's actually slower than like 98% of all the other um, distributions I run in VM. It's about one to two seconds slower um, loading up and Oh, it's notice. It's fractionally noticeable on when you're opening up the applications. Now, I have not run this on hardware, but since it's uh, an Ubuntu-based distribution, they call they say it's a based uh, it's based off Linux FX. It's the same team, and if you know anything about that, with their data breach that they had, we well, can't breach anything if you don't protect it. <laughs> Okay, moving right along. Um, yeah, basically it's the same team, and they're trying to get people to pay for it. Obviously, for this, for the key for activation and uh, support, which I think, yeah, I'm not going to go there. Uh, fast, stable, and very secure for users who like Microsoft Windows 10. That's the cinnamon. I'm not going to go it all on there. Power Toys Control Tools. Power Toys is a powerful tool set that implements a software layer based on Microsoft Windows applications, tools like Control Panel, Network Settings, OneDrive, Android Support, and many other many others are available through Power Toys. And I believe that's the same thing that's called on Windows, which is installed through Wine. Um, yeah, I really don't need to do anything with that. So what I'm going to do here is 
minimize this. One thing I wanted to show here is partners on board. Um, they say they do give you support, hence the remote desktop connection. But there's also other stuff in, that's on there that, yeah. All right, moving right along. Click up here, go to operating system. Downloads a free edition. I've already downloaded it. It's based off of Ubuntu's 2203. So they're calling this 11.4.3 LTS, which is just put a 20 on there or 22 and you got the same thing. Now, if you scroll down to the bottom, I've noticed with places that are trying to sell services to make themselves look more professional and like they have a partner uh, program that goes on. Like, uh, if you take a look over here at Ubuntu.com certified partners on board, if you see how this is uh, set up. Oh, okay, the logos aren't showing up, so we're going to reload this. There we go. Partners on board. HP, Dell, Lenovo, IBM. Now they have a certified on hundreds of devices. And it shows Ubuntu, HP, Lenovo, and Dell on there. They just move the logos around a little bit. To make it look like, you know, it's more official. For me, that's a red flag. When a uh, company or somebody offering services does this. So I went ahead and downloaded it. I seen it on the internet or on YouTube, excuse me. I'm jumping around here, but I seen it on YouTube. And when I seen it, the guy who showcased it had 69,000 views on it, but he really didn't go much into the thing itself. And it kind of sounded like he didn't really know much about it and maybe not very um, Linux proficient, maybe. I don't know. I, it could have been just that he didn't know much about it and he wasn't sure about it. But this is uh, one thing I always look for is this stuff. If you got partners on board and stuff like that, you know, affiliations, then you know they're legit. But if it's set up like this and they don't have anything like that on there, it's not necessarily bad. It's just that it makes me pause and go, hmm. Okay, now if you click on this and read more, it goes straight to the Ubuntu website. Like, you know, which is this same page right here. Um, and then you go down to the bottom and then there you go partners on board. It's like, it's almost like they're trying to make themselves like they're affiliated with Ubuntu almost like they're an official version or official official flavor of Ubuntu. I mean, nowhere on their website do they claim, make that claim, but it kind of the way it's set up implies in my opinion. Okay, on with the show. So we're going to minimize both these, both of these out, man. And then we're going to open up our virtual box manager and we're going to start. And we're going to start Ubuntu. Or Wubuntu, excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and pause this. You know what? I'm not going to pause it. I have a whole bunch of windows open on it and I wanted to go through everything, but I'll just show it to you. Well, let's start. Ooh, I got to turn off my network. And network's off. Okay, let's go look at the uh, huh, distribution. Let's open up uh, 
virtual box here again because it locked up for some reason I think I don't know the save state was all screwed up and it's still screwed up but I can load it I don't know why the virtual box does this I'm thinking about switching over to the other one the Linux one VM or bot or known boxes Okay, here we are. We need to go into a full view for this. Okay. <sighs> okay, let's go service status dash dang it. Okay, now this gives you a list of all your daemons that are installed in the system. It tells you what's running and what is not running. So, where is it? Okay, SSSD is not running. Uh, mini DLNA is not running. But, why would you have mini DLNA and SS? D running and what are those okay let's get out of this thing control F get out of it on virtual box let's reopen these bad boys up minimize this one and mini DLNA Damien serves media files music pictures and videos to clients on your network network Example clients include applications such as Totem, and Kodi, XBMC, devices such as portable media players, smartphones, and televisions. No big deal, right? Well, it has VLC installed on it. You can stream it that way. And this particular, and this is a server for a desktop distribution. Mini DLNA is a server software, software which the aim of being fully compliant with DLNA slash UPnP clients, the mini DLNA daemon serves media files, music, pictures, and videos to clients on a network. Example clients include applications such as Totem and XBMC, and devices such as portable media players, smartphones, and televisions. Mini DLNA is a simple, lightweight alternative to MediaTum, but has fewer features. It does not have a web interface for administration and must be configured by editing a text file. A new user is not going to even know this thing's on there and running. Hey, this is Steve from the Tux Depot Project. If you'd like to see the full video, it's over on Rumble. Just search the Tux Depot Project and you'll find it. And you'll find me. <laughs> Y'all have a good one.